So the photoelectric effect introduced us to quantized energy levels. And now what we're going to do is we're going to look at those quantized energy levels with respect to matter. And what we're going to do is we're going to excite the electrons in an atom. And when we excite the electrons in an atom, we're simply going to light them on fire, light the atoms on fire, and it's going to move electrons from lower energy levels to higher energy levels. And what's going to happen is those electrons will fall from those higher or what we call excited states to ground state or to lower uh, lower energy states. And when they do, they're going to release energy in the form of a photon. So let's go ahead and take a look at a video of uh, lighting things on fire. In this experiment, we are going to look at the characteristic colors given to flames by alkali metal compounds. The first flame is the red flame caused by lithium. Lithium chloride on a platinum wire gives a red flame when inserted into a Bunsen burner flame. Next, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is placed on the platinum wire. It gives a characteristic yellow color when placed in the Bunsen flame. These colors can be used to qualitatively identify the presence of the metals. A yellow flame always indicates the presence of sodium. Finally, potassium chloride. Potassium chloride on platinum wire is placed in the flame and it gives the characteristic lilac color. All these colors arise because the alkali metal atoms are raised to excited states by the temperature of the flame and then return to the ground state, emitting light of a characteristic frequency. So what we say about the energy of the electron is that it's quantized. It occurs at discrete energy levels. So you can think of quantized energy levels very much like a staircase. And a staircase indicates that these are quantized levels of energy. So the electron can exist at this level, at this level, at this level, and at this level, etc. But it can never be in between. There are specific allowed energies for the electron, and these in-between levels are uh, not allowed uh, for the electron. So when it transitions from one level to the other, it literally, it's like teleportation. <laughs> it winks out at one energy level and appears at another energy level. And if it goes from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, it has to absorb energy. And if it goes from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, it will release energy, and that energy released will be in the form of a photon of a quantized particular wavelength, particular frequency of energy, and we experience that as a color. All right, so a ramp, on the other hand, indicates an unquantized energy level. So this is Niels Bohr's model of the atom with quantized energy levels with respect to what we just observed. So let's say we have an electron at a lower energy level. Energy is required to move that electron from a lower energy state to a higher energy state. It winks out of the lower, appears in the higher excited state is what we call electrons when we move them into their higher energy state. So this would be considered to be an excited state. On the other hand, when an electron falls from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, it releases a photon of a characteristic wavelength. Now, if the electron is moving from a lower energy state to a higher energy state, 
the amount of energy is absorbed that is absorbed is the same amount of energy that is released when it moves from a higher energy state to that same lower energy state. That is, this transition from this energy level to this energy level is going to be the same as going from this level to this level, this same level. The only difference is if you move an electron from a lower energy state to a higher energy state, you have what we call absorption. Absorption, uh, absorption is going from a lower energy state to a higher energy state. And if you go from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, energy is released and we call this emission. So let's go ahead and finish this section up. Uh, we've established that energy is quantized. Energy emitted from an atom can only exist in specific quantities. That is packets. We call those quanta of energy. Packets of energy called quanta. Electrons in atoms can only exist at specific energy levels. And we'll call the ground state or the lowest energy state N equals 1. And then N equals 2 is further away from the nucleus. N equals 3, N equals 4, and N equals 5, and so on. We only need seven levels to describe all the elements that are in the periodic table. But uh, there's, you know, uh, room for more uh, if you have something extraordinary. Um, but... I want you to notice that the difference in energy between n equals 1, the lower energy level, and n equals 2 is a bigger difference than n equals 2 and n equals 3. When an electron moves from a lower energy level, it must absorb a specific amount of energy, uh, and we, uh, we call that absorption. Uh, when an electron moves from a higher energy, uh, uh, sorry, when an electron moves from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, energy is released uh, in the form of a photon, a quanta of energy. It's a very specific amount, and these are allowed energy transitions. Remember, electrons cannot exist in between those quantized energy levels. They can only exist in those allowed energy levels. So n equals 1 to n equals 2 would, would indicate that there's an absorption of energy that moves an electron from a lower energy level, n equals 1, to a higher energy level 2. Uh, if you're going from n equals 1, a lower energy level, to n equals 6, you're going to have a much larger amount of energy absorbed. That's going to be a larger transition because you're moving further away from the nucleus to a more excited state. And if you're going from n equals 2 to n equals 1, energy is released, a very specific amount. We call that emission. And n equals 6 to n equals 1 would be a much higher energy photon released. We call that emission. So just to remind you that the difference in the energy levels becomes less as you get further and further away from the nucleus. As you go from n equals 1 to n equals 7, these energy levels get closer and closer together. So a transition from n equals 5 to n equals 4 would release less energy than, let's say, n equals 3 to n equals 2. Every element has its own unique arrangement of electrons around the nucleus. And so each element will have its own absorption and emission spectrum. We call that arrangement of electrons around the nucleus the electron configuration.